Hello everybody, welcome back to another Leonardo.ai tutorial. I'm going to show you why I believe Leonardo.ai is as good and quite possibly better than Midjourney. And I say that, I don't say that lightly because I am a heavy duty Midjourney user. And if I go to my Midjourney account here, you'll see here that I've got the standard plan, the $30 a month plan. I use it and I use it a lot. And not only that, if I go to my home tab here, I got hundreds, thousands of images that I've created, just walls and walls and walls of stuff. So I am a serious mid-journey user, and I show you that not to show off, but to show you that when I say that this new program is as good or possibly better, I'm not just saying that because I want a clickbait title. I have used them both, and I seriously can't believe how good this is. And there's a couple reasons why. The first reason, and this is a very big one, is the app is currently free. Leonardo.ai is currently free. And that's very important because, you know, I'm not against, you know, people making money. I'm glad they make money. I pay mid-journey for their, you know, for their middle tier plan, and I use the hell out of it. But right now, Leonardo.ai is free, and that's a good thing, especially if you're just getting started in the old AI image and the AI art space, uh, especially with the old text to prompt stuff. The second reason why I think that this is as good, possibly better, is right here. If you go here to the left side under fine tuned models, you can go right here and click on your models. Leonardo.ai is currently the only program, as far as I know, at least as of today, February 18th. 2023 that allows you to create your own model your own ai set of prompts that are just basically like your own ai generated model and i'm going to show you here so for this one this one i've created it's called caravaggio and he's a uh, italian painter from you know the 17th and 16th century uh, turn of the century there i created a model that i can use over and over and over again that has all these settings pre-built for me that i trained so let me show you what i'm talking about here if i click on view you'll see here that this is just an example a low res example of what the image or the art would come out looking like it's got a quick uh description of it here it's 512 by 512 it's got stable diffusion as 1.5 is its example but more importantly you'll see here i can click on some of the uh, images that were created with it and presto i can now create all my images in the exact same style without having to type in 30 prompts you know and like okay you know because if you've seen some mid-journey uh prompt engineers and i include myself in some of this you know you'll see you know forward slash imagine high rent high definition octane render you know photorealism pixar artist painting by like just humongous prompts in leonardo.ai i just created this and now it just knows that this is the style i wanted in now how did i do that let me show you that here while i got you uh you can now create your own data sets and your data sets are used to train models so let's see here if i wanted to create a data set I would just go to my data sets here and then you'll see here that I've got four. I've got this one here, which is my Caravaggio. And then this is a new one that I was working on. And now this one here is my Pixar styles. So if I wanted to create a new one, I would just click new data set. I would call it whatever I want to call it. I'll just go quickly here. I think I've used up all my data sets. Uh, no, I haven't. So here you go. This is where I create the data set. And these are the images that I use to train my own personal model. Again, I believe this is feature is unique to leonardo.ai i'll take these 10 images for example and drag and drop them in there and then you'll see that they're getting uploaded and then once they're all up and running there we go i just click on this little button here train model and that's it it's going to use those images and train its own unique model so i'm not going to go ahead and do that but again i wanted to show you that that's all it takes once you've trained the model, you'll get an email and it'll say, hey, your new model's ready. Then all you got to do is go to fine tune models, click on your models, and then bang, here's Pixar. And if I want to view it, I just click on it, let's click view, and bang, I can start generating with this model. I haven't put a thumbnail up there yet, but I will probably later on. So there you go. That's all there is to it. That's what makes this so good. There are other things though. If I go back to the home, let me show you here. It has its own set of pre-built models. Like this one here is Deliberate 1.1, Luna, Leonardo Creative, RPG 4. If you want to create game assets for an RPG game, I'll just click on this here. And then it tells me it uses Stable Diffusion version 1.5, etc., etc. And then I could just start generating with this model. So if I want that look, that kind of style, I just have to click that one button and we're on our way. There's all these other models here that you can choose from. 
And if you're not, if you don't see anything you like, you can go to the community feed and then watch this. You can just flip through here. You can start taking these images. You can see if there's stuff you like here. Um, I would go through, well, actually, you know what? Let me show you one more thing here. Let's go to my personal feed. I can flip through my feed. So these are all the things I've done myself. So you don't have to go, you know, like mid journey, you kind of got to go through it and find the images and save them and envelope it to yourself. This just has this nice little place where you can go ahead and click on them and download them. Uh, the other things that are really, really interesting is the fine tune models here. If when I go back to this one, I can go back and here are all the platform models. This one's really good. They are not or selected by the way. But I can also use community models. How cool is that? If somebody in the community makes uh, images or art that you like and you want to kind of build the same style as them, just flip through here. Like this cute little themed icon is kind of cool. I like these penguins. Or maybe you like this horror theme. I would just click on it. This is community built. I will just click on generate with this model. And we are on our way. Look at that, right? I would just go dogs reading a book and presto. And it would be horror theme. So that's the instance prompt. And now I'm creating dogs reading a book using that community model. It should take just a few seconds. And then I'll show you a few more things. If I haven't sold you yet, you're going to be sold at the end of this. And then let you guys make your own decisions as to whether or not you think this is as good as Mid Journey. So, okay, it's taken a few seconds more than I would like, probably because so many people are using it. But here we go. So we created all of this. Oh, look at that. Okay, so this one's kind of cool. Uh, if I clicked on that, you know what? Okay, this is a low resolution. It looks similar to that horror theme style. But let's say I don't quite like it. I can go ahead and I can remove the background. I can unzoom it, which is the equivalent of moving the camera backwards. But if I want to upscale it to get a little bit of a better look, bang, all I got to do is hit that button and it's going to go and upscale it. Couple other things while I got you here, you can change the dimensions to some degree. You can change aspect ratios. So if you want a 16-9 because you want it for a thumbnail or a YouTube image or, a, or a, pardon me, a Facebook video or a YouTube video, you can change aspect ratio. You can use another image as a prompt. So if you want to, or use it as an input. So if you've got a picture, like I've got this nice picture here, I could drag and drop that right there and then use it so that when I say, you know, dogs reading a book, it will consider this image at a strength of 50%, which I can adjust as I see fit. And that will be used as a input. I mean, there's just so many great things you can do with this program. It's completely free. I think it's as good, possibly better than Mid Journey. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll be back soon with some more tutorials on it.